Hey everyone, today we're gonna go over how I created these effects for the Spider-Man animation inspired by the Spider-Verse movies. A lot of people ask me how I created this, so this is the breakdown of how I did this. The guy in this clip goes by Stuck Sanders. He's a freestyle dancer who I met in my hometown of San Jose. I'll be going over the elements that went into making this, so hopefully it can help you create some cool Spider-Verse stuff of your own. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So what tools did I use to create this? I used After Effects for all these effects that you see here. I use War Fusion for AI video generation for all the Spider-Men. I use Stable Diffusion for a lot of the backgrounds you're gonna see. And I use RVM or Robust Video Matting, which is automatic background removal. And I'm not gonna go over how War Fusion and RVM works because I already made videos for these. However, I will include the Laura I created for Miles Morales along with the settings. If you wanna get the Lauras I created for the other Spider-Men in this video, you can obtain them by joining my Patreon. And the links to everything I just mentioned is in the description. So this was my AI process. I wanted to use AI models for the more popular Spider-Man like Scarlet Spider, Miles Morales, 2099 Spider-Man, Spider-Punk, Spider-Man Noir, but I couldn't find many online. CivitAI.com only had a few Spider-Man models, so I had no choice but to train some Laura models myself. If you're not familiar with Laura's, it's basically a way to add specific characters or style to an already existing model, also known as a checkpoint. The checkpoint I use for this animation is Toon U. So this model will be our foundation. Imagine having a checkpoint as your canvas and Laura as a special paintbrush that allows you to modify specific aspects of the output. So I created a Laura for each spider person so the AI knows what character I'm trying to generate. I ran the entire sequence through Warp Fusion with each Laura generating all these videos you see here. Then I took a screenshot from the video and put it into Photoshop to remove Stuck the Dancer from the shot and have a clean background. I then ran the background through Stable Diffusion several times using different prompts and models to get various styles to make it seem like these backgrounds are from different universes. So now we're gonna come into After Effects with everything I generated. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is how to remove the background using track mats. Let's create a new composition just to run some examples. And I'm just gonna name this masking. So this was created when I ran my video through RVM. And so it created this alpha mat that you see here. And we're gonna use this to remove the background for all the generated videos that we created. So let's just grab one, one of my favorites. All right, so now I have my spider punk clip right here and I got my alpha clip here. So I'm just gonna come here to where it says track mat. If you don't see that, you're gonna come here to toggle switches until you see it. And then this little spiral thing is called pick whip. You're gonna drag that into the alpha mat like this. And then once you do that, you're gonna click on this little icon right here where it says alpha mat selected. Click to switch to luma mat. And now you should have your Spider-Man without a background. If I look at toggle transparency grid, you can see that it's completely transparent. So this is gonna be helpful later because then you can switch the backgrounds as much as you want. It's not perfect. You can see some like blurriness here and some fading. It didn't remove the background as smoothly as we would like it to. So that's masking here. The next effect we're gonna do is like this cutout outline. If you watch the movie, Spider-Punk turns sometimes into like this black and white with a paper cutout outline. The way I do this is, let me go back into here. I'm actually gonna composite these two. I'm gonna click on here and then I'm gonna click on this other one and I'm gonna right click and I'll put pre-composite and then I'm just gonna call it Punk Alpha. I'm going to add a tint. So I'm gonna put tint and I'm going to put the tint on this layer. So it makes it black and white. You can also add a brightness and contrast effect so that you can get a little bit more contrast here. After this, you're gonna duplicate this by pressing Control D and it's gonna make a copy and you're gonna to go to the bottom layer and I'm gonna change this matte black to white. So they're both white now. And we can actually remove this contrast and brightness from this layer. Then we're gonna add a simple choker. If we have the layer selected, we can just simply double click on this and then it will add the effect. And then I'm going to actually, let me take away the transparency so I can see clearly. I'm gonna bring the choke mat all the way down. The lowest it goes is negative 100, so negative 100. And as you can see, you already have like a white outline around this person. The next effect we're gonna add is roughen edges. For border, we're going to put like about 28. As you can see, it kind of made the edges a little more wobbly. And then edge sharpness, I'm gonna put 10. Scale, I'm gonna put 22. This looks kind of decent. It looks kind of noisy, not so much paper. So you can mess with the stretch width and height a little bit if you like, and you can mess with the complexity. Obviously the higher you go, the more noisy it looks like this. 
Uh, you might like that a little bit grunge kind of if you want to have it like have like movement so that it's not static you can mess around with the evolution just click on this stopwatch here if you press u on that layer it's going to show you where the keyframe was created so i'm going to bring it all the way to the beginning and just going to move the evolution just like drastically so that we can see the evolution happening moving you see it's moving now you get the idea if you want to add like a little bit more to this you can right click and put new and then put adjustment layer on that adjustment layer add posterize time and change it from 24 to 12 and then you're going to get this effect of a like a lower frame rate but it looks a little bit more hand drawn this way and if you want to make this more interesting we can add a newspaper clip actually let me rename this to uh outline let me duplicate the outline by pressing ctrl d and then i'm going to bring a newspaper clip like this i didn't really do this in mind but i think it's a good idea then drag this track mat here to the duplicate outline and then now you see the newspaper and the outline but it's not interesting enough so what you have to do let's hide this posterized layer and let's actually lock it so it doesn't move around and uh, i'm gonna take this off the mat so i can see the newspaper i'm gonna press alt shift p to create a keyframe for position and then alt shift r to create a keyframe for rotation and for both of these i'm going to highlight both i'm going to right click and then i'm going to go to toggle hold keyframe right here now when i move a few frames forward any change i make is going to apply a new keyframe and then i'm going to move the position of the newspaper but i'm also going to rotate it so i'm going to move the rotation here and then i'm going to have two keyframes that were created for those changes that were made i'm going to go ahead a few frames again and then I'm gonna move the newspaper again, rotate it again, and just pretty much any position, as long as it's different from the previous keyframe. So then I go a few frames forward, I'm gonna do one more time, and then I'm gonna move it again, maybe move it down here, and then I'm going to rotate it slightly. So as you play it back, you should have this movement happening, and then we wanna make sure that this gets looped over and over again. So I'm actually gonna move these slightly, and then if I select all of them and press Alt, I can move them all together like this to make the animation faster. So now we want to loop these parameters. The way we do that is by clicking on Alt and then on the stopwatch and you're going to get this expression position pop up. You're going to click on this play button. You're going to go to property and then loop out. You're going to do the exact same thing for rotation. This little play button, property, loop out. And when you do that, you're going to get this repeating, but you want this to be masked now. So let's mask this to the outline again, like we did earlier. And now we can play it back. So you have something that's a little bit more interesting, right? And now we can turn on the posterize and then we get that real effect. The next effect I wanna talk about is this glitch shape effect that you see here. But before we continue, I wanna take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare has a bunch of different classes in a variety of fields like creative arts, design, technology, business, and much more. Whether you're a creative individual like me looking to learn more about video editing, motion graphics, or a business-minded person seeking to diversify your income, Skillshare has got you covered with a broad range of topics. As someone who's always striving to find new and creative ways to enhance my videos, lately I've been learning a lot about 3D camera tracking as well as exploring the combination of Blender and After Effects for VFX. I'm also excited to learn about marketing my brand through videos, so I have Andy J. Pizza's course queued up where he shares insight on how creatives can use social media to propel their careers. It's completely normal to be in the process of discovering your passion and trying to figure out which career path to pursue. The idea of choosing the right direction can sometimes feel overwhelming. Start by finding a topic that piques your interest and see where it takes you. Skillshare offers a vast variety of options ensuring there's something for everyone. The beauty of Skillshare is that every class is thoughtfully divided into parts making it easy for you to absorb the information at your own pace. So embrace the process, take those small steps, and watch your passion and expertise evolve. If you would like to try out Skillshare, I have a link in the description. The first 1,000 people to use the link will get one month free trial of Skillshare. So don't miss out on this amazing opportunity. Let's create another composition again. And we're gonna do, I don't know what it's called, just glitch shapes. And we're going to get this alpha composition that we created earlier, this uh, punk alpha, where it's just the guy with the transparent background. What we want to do here, well, let's, let's actually include um, the original clip here. So we have this original clip right here. 
and this guy's on top. What you want to do is you want to maybe start off somewhere like right here. You want this to be short. You don't want to be like super long. So maybe just a few frames like this. I want to trim this layer here. So I'm going to click on Alt right square bracket to trim the end. But if I want to trim the beginning, then I would click on Alt left square bracket. Make sure you're not moving the actual layer because it's going to misalign your animation. You just want to trim the layer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this pen tool right here and I'm going to start creating some shapes like this. You have to make sure you're on the layer where you have the generated AI animation. So you come here and then one more right here, I guess. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a tritone effect. So try tone and it's going to become black and white, but you can come here and change some colors. So I'm going to make this like a pink. The darks are going to be maybe something else. Like you can choose whichever color that uh, looks nice. You can always also add like a Dimitri color, put it above this and then go to basics. And then you can bring in the whites here so you can get some more highlights just to make it stand out a little more. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go to my alpha punk composition and I'm going to press control D to duplicate. So the reason I want to duplicate this is because I want to add another Spider-Man. If I go into here, I got my punk clip here, but if I go into all my Spider-Man uh, videos, I can bring in a new Spider-Man for like, for example, I want to bring in this Spider-Man here. I just press alt and then drag it on top of this clip and it's going to replace it. It applies all the settings that I already had. So it already removed the background for me. Then I come back to here. I can duplicate this and trim the start and end of these. So they're not completely overlapping. Now I'm going to come into the punk alpha two that we created. You can rename it. We can put Scarlet, Scarlet spider alpha if you like. And then I'm going to press alt and then drag it onto the layer, but make sure that the layer is selected or else you can't do this and then just let it go. And then you have a new Spider-Man in that position. And all you got to do now is just change the shapes here like this, however you like, change the color, however you like, and then you have bam, bam. Now you can do that again. Bam, bam, bam. So it's going to be fast. And then another thing you can add, press S to scale, make this a little bit bigger and then bam, bam, bam. You see, another thing I would do is I would add some Glow effects, glow, copy, glow, glow. You can do this over and over and just kind of get this crazy effect. Or you can keep the same character. You don't have to be switching the characters like I did here. Just have this effect just kind of go over it many times. So the last effect is this effect here that you see here. And it's actually my favorite. Uh, I'm going to teach you how to do that. Let's create a new composition and we're going to do chromatic glitch. I'm just going to call it that. All right. And we're going to bring in the punk alpha. So what we have to do now is we have to right click new solid layer. Uh, let's make it just black. Let's name it by clicking on it and pressing enter. Let's name it displacement map. And we're going to add fractal noise on here. And you're going to get this cloudy thing that we're seeing here. We're going to make noise type to block. We're going to make complexity to and we're going to go to where it says transform. And then I'm going to click on uniform scaling. And then I'm going to bring up the width like this. Then on the Spider-Man layer, you want to add a displacement map effect right here, where it says displacement map layer. We want to make sure we select the layer that we just named displacement map. So we click on that. We come here to where it says source. We're going to go to effects and mask. So now we can hide the displacement map layer so we don't see it. And now when we make changes here in our Spider-Man layer, you're going to see this effect or you can have the vertical effect like this and what you want to do is you want to create some keyframes so let's for example create a keyframe for the horizontal i'm going to press u so i can see where the keyframes at and then right click press toggle hold keyframe and then you want to move forward a few frames and then you don't want to make it too far away so because you want it to be quick then we move this up so we can see this effect happening and then just a few frames after you can probably copy and paste this and it's going to go back to normal. So you get this quick glitch effect. You can do it multiple times. Like I'm going to do it again here, copy and paste it in the middle one. I'm going to change the number. So it has like different degrees of changes so that it like, yeah, so they can have like that glitch effect. Yeah. So you get that. And on top of that, you can add another effect called chromatic aberration. 
So if we put chromatic aberration, uh, you're gonna get this effect that you definitely seen in the movie many times. It's almost like this misalignment of the green and the red colors that gives it this effect. You don't want it throughout the whole thing. You want it during these moments where you get this kind of glitch effect. We want to also create some keyframes for this. We want to go to these parameters that don't have zero on them. So I'm going to keyframe these parameters right here. I'm going to press U so I can, U and U again, so I can see all the keyframes. I'm going to move these here where the glitch is happening. And then over here where the glitch is not happening, I'm going to put zero on all of these. Zero, zero. So there's no effect. And then it pops up here and then goes away again here. So I'm gonna copy these here at the end and then it goes back to zero. So that's the kind of effect that you can get out of this. So the effects I just mentioned, I just applied them several times throughout the video. I have them all running from start to end. I just trim the clips like right here. I have the Miles Morales Spider-Man and then 2099 Spider-Man. Uh, he can keep going all the way to the end, but I wanted to make sure that there was alternating spider people. So that's why you see here, it switched to someone else and then it switches to someone else. And sometimes I followed the beat so that the switch can happen on beat. Not always, but sometimes I did that. And I just kept alternating all the spider people throughout the video. So this part I think is a little bit self-explanatory. It's a lot of work. Also changing the backgrounds, these green layers represent backgrounds. So I just kept alternating the backgrounds as well. Once you learn how to do the effects I just talked about, then you can achieve a lot with this. Yeah, so just go crazy and tag me. I would love to see the stuff you guys create. All right, everyone, I hope this was helpful for you. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. That really helps my channel out a lot. So until next time, like always, take care. God bless. Peace.